Hi, I'm Jeremy, uh, agent for NFU Mutual Insurance, just doing a short film about uh, the importance of uh, trailer servicing. Here with uh, my friend uh, Anthony Wallace, aka the trailer medic. From an insurance point of view, it's uh, vital that the trailers are roadworthy from a liability angle, uh, but also for accidental damage to your trailer itself, but also the towing vehicle. And also, um, where it's a livestock trailer, the safety of the livestock involved. So uh, Anthony's going to uh, tell us a bit in a moment about the main things he would look out for uh, when servicing a trailer. Right, we have here a trailer which um, I've come to service today. Um, but also what I'd like to talk about is just simple checks which, uh, as a user of a trailer, you can check uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or each time uh, you use the trailer. Uh, there are lots of simple checks just to keep an eye on. Um, the, the first main one, the most important one, is physically the coupling which goes onto the, the tow ball of your vehicle. Um, before you actually hitch on, you want to make sure there's no up and down movement or play there. So make sure that you keep uh, it nice and greased, which is just simply two grease points on top of the hitch coupling. And the other factor which often gets overlooked is, is physical play. Um, there's a serious uh, issue in the fact it is very important to actually grease tow balls on vehicles. Um, it reduces wear in the coupling and it reduces wear on your tow ball. Tow balls are now part of an MOT testing. Um, you're not allowed to have any more than 3 mil wear on a tow ball, as is you're not allowed any more than 3 mil wear on a coupling. To test for wear, you simply put a tow ball in and just check to see if there's up and down movement. If there's no movement or what you think is under the 3 mil, then it's a safe coupling. Back from the coupling, you know, the most, probably the most important thing is this cable. It's a safety cable, and it's the cable that in the event of a trailer coming off the back of your vehicle, this is what pulls the handbrake on and stops your trailer. Um, it is a legal requirement for all trailers to be fitted with a safety cable. With the safety cable, it should be attached to this sort of mounting point on the vehicle because if the uh, tow ball itself comes off then uh, the trailer goes regardless whether you've got the uh, safety cable attached or not. An easy thing to check is, is your lights. Um, generally most faults with lights, if it's not a bulb, if the fault is in the plug, they're subject to all the road dirt, grime and everything like that. You just unscrew the back, pull the clip part, and just have a look inside to see if it's corroded. This one's corroded, so I would replace that. It may work, but you'd have a scenario where once a lot more water gets in there, the corrosion breaks the wires, and then you, you start losing your lights. Uh, another thing with trailer, an important feature of a trailer is obviously the handbrake. Um, handbrakes should be mainly used for when actually unhitching and hitching the trailer. Um, never leave handbrake on when parked up for a period of time because you go back to uh, the wheels locking up and causing brake problems when you want to use the trailer. Um, handbrakes are also a pretty good guide to see how your braking system is. Um, when you pull a handbrake on you shouldn't go any further back uh, than this. It generally shows that the brakes come on at a reasonable strength. Any further back and there's a chance there's too much play in your braking system which will cause uh, a banging sensation or erratic braking. Obviously when storing a trailer with a handbrake off you need to invest in some chocks. Uh, just pulled this wheel off from a trailer with a seized wheel on the front. Temptation is to, when the wheel seizes, just keep driving forwards and back until it frees up. The correct way is to slacken off all the adjustment and then gradually work off a wheel. Um, for this exact reason, the fact there's a, a lot of rust that's built up inside the drum, and you've got a lot of water in there, which has caused rust onto the brake shoe itself. And it's where the pad is actually stuck to the drum, forcing the pad to separate from the actual shoe. Um, if that had been just driven around, continued drive around, you'd end up with the pad completely separating and then jamming against the drum and the mechanism causing the wheel to lock up on the road. Mm. 
I'm walking around the trailer um, before any travelling or just on a, like a monthly inspection on a trailer. It's worth just getting down and just having a look at the tyres. Um, trailer tyres generally always have plenty of tread. It's very rare for a trailer to actually wear a tread out. But what often happens due to uh, sun fatigue is you start having cracking, perishing on the sidewalls. It generally always starts near the top, near to the tread. What eventually happens is that perishing gets worse and the tread will start to separate from the sidewall which will cause the blowouts. Another thing to check on a regular basis, and, and I mean a regular, it can almost be weekly or every time uh, you think of using the trailer, are condition of the floor and the front and rear ramps. Um, it doesn't really need to say why in the sense that obviously that's what takes the horse's weight. You've got a rotten floor you run the risk of the horses going through the floor, causing a, a major accident. There are a lot of modern trailers now, and they're fitted with aluminium floors, so it, it takes away um, the risk. Again, though, it still needs to be checked, because obviously they're, they're still riveted and bolted down, so you want to make sure that all that is in good condition. Um, and again, along all the edges, again, just check the condition. Just peel back with your can of rubber matting and just have a look all down the sides. Older trailers obviously are fitted with wooden floors and this is where you need to do that regular weekly check. Again, wooden floors will always rot on the sides first and that's where the floor actually is, is the main weight is sat on. So again, any dampness along these sides and softness then the floor will need to be changed. Um, again, just check for any edges along there. If you're in a situation where the rubber matting can be pulled out quite easily, then obviously once in a while take all the matting out and have a really good close inspection of the floor. Also gives an opportunity for the floor to air and dry thoroughly. Check uh, before using these tyre pressures, um, particularly horse trailers of most makes, uh, they should actually run around about 50 psi, 50 to 50 psi. If they run much less than that, then you run the risk of more heat. Uh, going into the tyres and then affecting the bearings and another simple factor is soft tyres can cause a trailer to just weave which can cause a lot of discomfort for the horse in the trailer so it's always good to make sure your tyre pressure is always around the 50-55 psi mark whether you're carrying one horse or two horses.